Hello everyone, good morning or good afternoon, um, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, welcome to this TELET webinar, The Era of Smart IoT Modules. I'm Amanda Slink, the Head of Global Events here at TELET, and I will be moderating today's event. Uh, before we start, we would like to understand how our audience would describe your IoT um, Android-based project. Um, so please, if you could, take a second to fill out the poll question, which you'll see on your screen now. Now let's get to know our speakers as well. To explain this topic today, I'm pleased to be joined by two speakers. First, we have Martino Tercado, the head of software at TELUS. And second, we have Joe Braga, the head of regional marketing at TELUS. Just before I hand it over to Joe to start our presentation, I do have a few quick reminders for our audience. I would like to encourage you to interact by posting questions. Um, we will have time to answer some of those at the end of our presentation here today. Simply submit a question by posting in the box to the right of the slides. Also, please be sure to check out the resources section in the upper right-hand corner of your screen for some additional information on today's webinar topic. And finally, we will send out a replay link to all attendees at the conclusion of this webinar, so please be sure to keep a lookout for that. Um, and with that, Joe, I will hand it over to you to kick us off. Thank you. And uh, let me uh, let me add my own uh, welcome to Amanda's uh, for you to, to you all today. Um, I want to get us started here today by uh, you know getting you know explaining a little bit of the of the premise and the uh, and the uh, context of something that's really going to come in handy to understand the concept uh, of smart modules, and that has to do, of course, with uh, SmartX, uh, you know, we, we've all uh, we've all heard uh, smart homes, smart cities, smart manufacturing, and, and what have you. And you know, these kind of have been loosely created uh, um, across uh, industry. But uh, analysts and uh, and um, and experts of that are actually turning this more or less into a movement, a vision. Uh, in order to really bring about uh, an acceleration because, you know, wh when you look at uh, what what's common to SmartX and, and smart, uh, smart Cities, Smart Home, and what have you, uh, you do see that uh, um, it, it can be a vision, you know, to, to bring together the, uh, the entire ecosystem. So the SmartX... SmartX movement uh, we're examining here um, is is a vision with a very simple director directive. You know, first think digital, and uh, and second make it absolutely connected. So that uh, you know, for the SmartX space, then the entire solution e ecosystem must be captured digitally. That's a that's a requirement uh, and. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the networks, uh, sensor networks, uh, data transport, storage analysis, and other systems that must be um, fully implemented and, uh, and integrated, and and uh, and every component of it is is you know at all times connected. So, uh, with Ash, I'm going to hand it over to uh, uh, to Martino now that you know to get into the uh, you know, to the uh, to the dovetail of SmartX and the uh, and the smart module here, Martina. Thank you, Joe. Uh, hi, everybody. So um, I think this is a great introduction. And so, in the context of uh, SmartX today, uh, we're going to look at a new space uh, uh, being created uh, both. Uh, um, by the new trends in the traditional verticals of IoT and the impact uh, of the other market sector. We will discuss why we are seeing an increasing need uh, for a new generation of wireless modules and how they can help develop advanced uh, IoT solutions, achieving a better level of integration, both in terms of uh, features and computing power and uh, a great user experience. Uh, specifically, uh, the, the, the influence of uh, consumer products uh, is uh, spreading across many IoT applications and devices. 
And this is creating the demand for uh, wireless modules that uh, leverage advanced uh, operating systems and software that enable uh, top-notch uh, user experience. Well, this essentially boils down to supporting uh, a consumer-style application environment and uh, multimedia experience. For example, um, allowing device manufacturers to create IoT devices. We are thinking uh, about uh, home uh, thermostats, cameras, um, but also um, applications like vending machines. All of them uh, with a full set of uh, multimedia capabilities, uh, touch and swipe interaction uh, with the device, uh, or even voice interaction. And uh, in order to achieve that, um, the operating system of choice uh, for this class of devices is Android, as we will see later in the presentation. And on mass production solutions, we see already uh, chip down designs that already integrate the same architectures and chipsets, or some close derivatives uh, of the chips uh, that are used in, uh, within the smart modules. Another key aspect uh, is the need to push uh, more intelligence at the edge. Uh, this means that some applications demand a much higher computing power, including hardware acceleration for uh, graphics uh, and, uh, and acceleration for uh, uh, artificial intelligence applications. And uh, in order to make it uh, easier to integrate uh, and uh, be cost efficient, uh, uh, the device developers need also systems that can manage uh, the uh, HMI peripherals and sensors and multiple wireless technologies all in one solution. And the smart module is, uh, is essentially the element that sits exactly in the intersection of these uh, three different areas and uh, somehow represents the convergence of all these uh, requirements. So some of you might not be uh, familiar yet with this segment. It's a relatively new one that is not mainstream yet, uh, but has already been around for, um, for a couple of years. Uh, we started uh, seeing the first applications in the point of sale solutions back in 2017, 2018, mainly due to a uh, regulatory push and uh, an important uh, replacement campaign of uh, all the terminals. Now, it's interesting to see in a recent report from uh, industry research, uh, the expected growth for uh, Android uh, point of sales uh, market, uh, as they forecast uh, a CAGR of 46% uh, over the next, fi next five years. But the other important trend that we see is that uh, such solutions uh, uh, will no longer be relegated to niche segments, and the scope uh, of, the of the adoption uh, will, um, will rapidly expand uh, into new verticals, making the smart module and the related applications one of the most interesting opportunities for IoT in the years to come. And here we see uh, a summary of the main verticals that, uh, uh, in our view, can offer significant opportunities in, uh, in such space. Uh, handheld and wearables, uh, for example, represent a typical application, uh, as they reuse many of the concepts and uh, aspects that are relevant to mobile handsets. Uh, computing power and uh, ease of use uh, combined uh, with robust security features can also contribute uh, to build uh, the next generation of healthcare devices. Uh, smart home and building automation solution is, is a key vertical that we already mentioned uh, with a broad range of applications that can benefit from new features of smart modules and uh, providing uh, room for, uh, for innovation. And, then also telematics or cameras are use cases where there is usually a very good fit considering the hardware configuration and the software capabilities required. And as we said, the retail and payment solutions are already uh, 
pretty successful uh, uh, segment uh, for smart modules. Uh, industrial applications where more power and uh, intelligence at the edge is the, is the main requirement uh, uh, help us complete uh, this picture. We will uh, review later uh, more in detail some of the use cases uh, that uh, uh, we are currently discussing with our customers. So we mentioned edge intelligence, and I'd like to spend a few more words on that. Uh, according to Deloitte, uh, the, the global market for the intelligent edge will grow also this year at a CAGR of uh, 35%. Of course, this includes a large variety of solutions and technologies, not only smart modules and edge devices, but uh, uh, it's significant to see how enterprises increasingly need uh, to push more data processing at the edge. Now, to, to paraphrase the definition that Deloitte provides in its research, uh, the, the intelligent edge is the combination of advanced connectivity, compact processing power, and uh, artificial intelligence uh, located near devices that use and generate data. And this intelligence needs to complement the cloud intelligence. So the intelligent edge uh, will provide uh, several benefits. Um, we can uh, we can list some of them. For example, a more efficient use of the um, <clears throat> of the bandwidth and the and the network uh, and resilience against uh, unreliable or uh, intermittent connectivity. Um, more control over data orchestration or a better privacy through the ability to keep more data local rather than needing to transmit it to the, uh, to the core uh, uh, cloud application. Uh, of course, support for low latency use cases, and uh, more in general, um, greater automation and autonomy. So there are, if we look at the diagram, uh, uh, there are various enablers helping this transition. Uh, and you may recognize some of the attributes that we have already mentioned. Uh, before, and here is where you need more powerful platforms uh, as developers are seeking to send to the cloud only, only those data that are really needed to support the learning process and the analytics. Mm. A kind of uh, summary of what is being captured by a local sensor and not the full data set, which would be impractical or very costly for uh, many use cases. So let's try to position the smart module uh, versus the traditional solutions and discuss why it's really um, a different animal. So first of all, using a smart module, it is possible to implement solutions that couldn't be addressed in the past in one single module. It's about the powerful CPU and hardware acceleration for advanced applications, whether it is uh, graphic acceleration, whether it is edge analytics uh, or machine learning. It's, uh, it's about the multiple wireless technologies available in one single uh, platform, like uh, cellular, Wi-Fi, BLE. And it's also related uh, to the, the comprehensive set of supported uh, digital interfaces and peripherals, uh, like displays, touch screens, cameras, uh, and uh, industrial sensors. Also, the software ecosystem is unique. You have uh, the Android operating system, which is robust and secure. Android provides the most advanced development tools and frameworks uh, in the, in, the, in the software ecosystem. Uh, one of the largest developer base uh, in the software industry. And it comes uh, with the standardized design and development process uh, and also life cycle management and maintenance uh, uh, follow Android ecosystem best practices. And so this is a very uh, sophisticated architecture. And, uh, and among other things, uh, uh, it has been designed to create applications uh, with advanced UI 
and to offer a state-of-the-art user experience that we, are, that we are all familiar with. So this makes the choice of designing a solution based on a smart module not an obvious one, since you have to carefully consider the requirements and the specifications for your application. Uh, the hardware configuration is the first challenge, as you need to select uh, the correct peripherals to be integrated into the system and uh, uh, consider, um, consider the intersections of hardware and software aspects involved. I'm referring, for example, to drivers or, or the performance considerations. Uh, the user experience and the human-machine interface is another area to take care of. If there is, especially if there is a direct interaction between the device and the end user. Uh, we know that the benchmark uh, is pretty high if we consider what the average consumer is used to in the daily interaction with digital devices. So a poor design uh, would result uh, in a great dissatisfaction from uh, the end user and uh, a less effective delivery of the service. Also, the software architecture, as we said, is much different from, uh, from what the embedded developer might be used to. It's a different skill set and knowledge that is required here. Uh, many internal functions, for example, are not surfaced to the developer as the system automatically manages uh, various aspects. But at the same time, the, uh, the complexity is much higher. And uh, security is another area that cannot be ignored. Um, there is a much uh, larger threat vulnerability attack surface, uh, but uh, Android operating system uh, and the chipsets powering the hardware architecture include some of the most advanced uh, uh, security features available in the market uh, that uh, must be uh, utilized in order to meet customer expectations and count uh, on, a, on a harder solution. So what can really help navigate the complexity is the fact that with Android, we get, we get access to the, to the tools, uh, the design patterns, and the processes uh, um, that uh, have been established uh, over the years by the large ecosystem that has now become uh, uh, very mature. Uh, this offers room for innovation and continuous advancement. There is also more flexibility. And many options available to the developer that need to be assessed for starting a project. Uh, whether, for example, um, you prefer to make or, or, uh, or buy, uh, whether you are considering to use some open source or third-party commercial code, uh, outsource some, uh, uh, some parts of the solution or own the full solution, which depends also on the skills available in the team, uh, the time to market, uh, and, uh, and of course, the budget. And a more dynamic environment uh, usually requires a more dynamic uh, approach, especially if you are planning to grow and evolve the service uh, during uh, its life cycle. And this is where you have to consider continuous integration and software deployment uh, as a key element uh, in your strategy and, for example, put in place uh, uh, the needed services for software management or uh, device management. I would like to focus on some uh, important considerations about security. Um, Android uh, uh, has a robust security model that, that is pretty mature after many years in the market. Uh, with the industry-leading uh, security features, and, um, and it's supported by a rigorous uh, security program to keep uh, the platform and the ecosystem safe. So the foundation of the Android uh, platform is the Linux kernel, uh, which is uh, stable, it's secure, and it's trusted by many corporations and security professionals. And Linux provides Android with several key security features, uh, which include, for example, uh, process isolation, 
our user-based uh, uh, permission model with the uh, security enhanced Linux to apply access control policies on all processes. Uh, you can also have file system protection and encryption and uh, uh, a full set of cryptographic APIs for use by applications. Also, Android's application security is enforced uh, by the application sandbox, which um, uh, uh, isolates apps from each other and uh, help protect uh, user resources from one another. Looking at, su at some uh, hardware-based uh, uh, features, uh, uh, we have Secure Boot. Uh, Secure Boot guarantees uh, the integrity of the device software, uh, starting from uh, hardware root of, root of trust uh, up to the uh, full system partition. So what happens uh, uh, during the boot? Uh, basically, each stage uh, is uh, uh, cryptographically verifying the integrity and the authenticity of the next stage before executing it, effectively creating a full chain of trust up to the application level. Also, uh, the Android security team is responsible for releasing uh, monthly security updates, uh, uh, which also provides criteria to determine the severity of each vulnerability and the urgency of uh, consequent actions that need to be taken uh, based uh, on the type of uh, vulnerability. So we have already mentioned uh, some of the challenges uh, involved uh, in uh, such highly integrated products. Uh, so when choosing uh, a smart module, uh, you effectively design your solution around a so-called system or module. It is supposed to cover most ideally the, the whole of the key features and functions of the device. Now, higher integration means higher complexity, but also clear benefits in terms of uh, compactness and size. Uh, it also guarantees the correct coexistence of the various technologies, and uh, most importantly, the cost efficiency. That would be difficult to achieve working with a patchwork of different components. And also, we cannot ignore uh, the fact that when transitioning a product uh, from uh, traditional embedded IoT to, uh, to Android, uh, that there is a learning curve involved. And the risk of misconception, not only when we talk about the technology uh, pieces like the programming languages, uh, the runtime environment, the system services, but also when we might try to apply the same patterns and, uh, and approach to the design and implementation of the product. So more in general, uh, whether the sector uh, you are coming from is the Android ecosystem or the embedded IoT, uh, most likely, the solution uh, uh, you're going to design is in the, in the intersection of these two uh, of these two worlds, and uh, and so you need a perspective and knowledge that takes into account uh, both of them. And this is where the choice of the vendor can really can really make the difference. Uh, so Telit has a long uh, track record in helping customers develop uh, uh, their solutions either uh, with direct support or through the partner ecosystem, uh, with services ranging from uh, design advisory, uh, design review, uh, pre-certification, and programs that can take the customer through the steps involved in uh, conceiving and designing the solution, implementing it, uh, and deploying uh, the, the, the IoT service. Now, looking at some key verticals, I would like to share with you our views on the market uh, based also on the, on the discussions we are having on a daily basis uh, with our customers. We think that most uh, IoT verticals uh, will find application areas that could benefit from smart modules. Uh, 
but some of the verticals currently showing uh, uh, biggest traction in the market uh, are uh, home automation, video telematics and cameras, uh, retail and payment, uh, and uh, industrial handouts. Um, on the smart home, uh, Gartner sees uh, uh, the smart home ecosystem comprised of solution areas uh, in smart appliances, uh, utility management, uh, uh, smart entertaining, um, security and safety, and wellness monitoring. In a recent report, uh, the Gartner estimates there will be more than 20 billion IoT connections by smart home devices over the next five years. Telit, for example, has been a traditional and uh, long-standing uh, module vendor to home and uh, commercial alarm and surveillance uh, system OEMs uh, for more than a decade uh, and with, um, with a sustained market share. And the smart module is, the, is set to enable the next generation of designs that are transitioning from the, uh, from the traditional concept of, uh, of module uh, and external MCU to an integrated solution uh, for alarm and home panels, uh, but also for uh, smart uh, thermostats and other devices. This looks also a pretty natural evolution considering the proximity of these solutions to other products that we use in our uh, daily life. As we already mentioned, uh, retail and payment has historically been a high growth uh, rate market. We are not only talking about uh, uh, point of sales, uh, uh, cash uh, registers, uh, which have been one of the first applications to use smart module. But for example, we are looking at other applications in retail, uh, uh, in the retail space uh, that need more uh, flexibility uh, or pervasive uh, distribution. Uh, so I'm thinking about uh, uh, next generation vending machines that will benefit from uh, solution based uh, on, um, on touch screens, large displays, uh, and uh, a better user experience. Cameras and video telematics is another segment that will surely uh, take advantage of smart modules considering the native support uh, for digital camera sensors and the own module acceleration and processing capabilities. The key ingredients are um, a combination of hardware features and software that can power these uh, applications in order to perform uh, uh, local tasks, uh, process the information captured by sensors, and enable more advanced services or simply providing an easy-to-use interface for, uh, for the end user. Potential applications uh, range from uh, video surveillance, uh, aftermarket uh, uh, camera, dash cam, uh, but also other use cases like uh, body cam. Uh, one of our customers is designing a solution that would be adopted by uh, police forces in order to record their operations while enabling real-time communication uh, with the headquarters. And to conclude, we, we are seeing uh, um, lots of interest uh, uh, from industry sectors that need to utilize uh, uh, new solutions for uh, devices like um, um, PDA scanners, uh, barcode readers uh, with integrated screens and uh, advanced features, both in terms of the um, user interface, uh, processing power, and connectivity options especially in uh, mobility scenarios. Think about how these devices can help uh, pass uh, delivery services or businesses uh, with similar uh, needs. Let me now spend the final part of the presentation to introduce you uh, to the first smart module in our portfolio, uh, which is the SC150A4. But I would like to start from the architecture at the heart uh, of the product. Uh, the device is powered uh, by uh, a Snapdragon chipset uh, that is inheriting uh, all the powerful features 
that we typically see in uh, mobile handsets. It has uh, a 64-bit quad-core CPU, uh, Adreno graphic acceleration with uh, uh, HD uh, video processing capabilities and native support, uh, native support for uh, uh, display and uh, uh, dual cameras. Uh, these chips that integrate an LTE Cat4 modem, uh, but also uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth uh, connectivity, uh, GNSS, uh, which are included in the same uh, platform. So SC-150A4 is the name of the new module uh, series. Uh, this, uh, uh, this module has a form factor of just 40.5 uh, uh, by 40.5 millimeters. And it's an LCC LGA that allows uh, easy integration in compact devices. Um, the LTE CAT4 can offer uh, a maximum data rate of up to 150 megabits per second downlink and 50 megabit uh, <clears throat> per second uplink. It also has Wi Fi, ABGN. So it's ideal for uh, bandwidth intensive applications such as uh, live uh, HD uh, video. And uh, Bluetooth and low energy provide additional connection flexibility. Along uh, with an embedded uh, multi-constellation, uh, GNSS, uh, this means that uh, uh, we can cover GPS, uh, Beidou, uh, GLONASS, and uh, Galileo. And uh, it's a receiver that provides a high performance for uh, positioning and uh, navigation. Uh, the SE-150A4 provides uh, native support for uh, integrate, integrated peripherals uh, like uh, high-resolution touch displays, advanced cameras, uh, sensors, and audio interfaces, and lots of uh, digital interfaces like uh, USB, UART, uh, SPI, and I2C to connect uh, <clears throat> uh, different types of, uh, of sensors. The modules are available now in two versions, uh, the SE-150A4 uh, NA for a, a North America market, uh, which uh, supports uh, 13 LTE bands, including uh, band 14 for AT&T FirstNet, uh, and uh, band 66 and 71 for T-Mobile, as well as uh, a 3G fallback. Uh, the SE-150A4 EU, is for a European, European market and the rest of the world. And it supports uh, band 28 and nine additional LTE bands, as well as uh, 2G and 3G fallback. Of course, the SC-150A4 is the first uh, series uh, in this module family. The plan is to grow the product line with new platforms, so stay tuned for updates and further announcements uh, in the coming months. Few final words on the development kit that comes with a full set of uh, peripherals. It, um, it's basically um, a full application board with a, a touch screen, cameras, uh, microphone speakers, and all sorts of sensors that allow to test immediately <clears throat> all the main features of the platform or even build a, a working POC. It all comes with documentation, pre-integrated drivers, and sample apps that shows you how to take advantage of the various functions, uh, how the APIs work, uh, and how to expand uh, various functionalities. Uh, Android is pre-installed. You just need to download the code of sample apps, uh, install the Android tools uh, like the Android Studio, compile the apps, and then run them on the, on the EVK. So with that, I'm done for my presentation today. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, but if you can stay a few more minutes, uh, we still have time to answer some of your questions. And before we move on to the, to the Q&A, I encourage you to, to go to our website or reach out to our uh, sales team or marketing team for any queries. 
if you want to start evaluating our product uh, for your next IoT project. Uh, the link is on the screen, and you can also go to the tele.com website, and you will find all the references and uh, all the useful information. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Martino. Um, audience, before we get to the questions, I am going to drop one last poll on your screen here. Um, if you would like to have one of our experts contact you directly, um, please feel free to respond here on the poll, and someone will reach out. Um, as Martina said, we do have time for a few questions now, um, and there is still time to ask a question. So please feel free to submit using the box to the right of the slide presentation, um, and we'll do our best to cover it here in the next couple minutes. Um, we have gotten a few questions here, so I'm just going to dive right in. Um, first question I've got in the inbox, what factors would definitely determine the use of a smart module over a standard one? Um, I'm going to take this, and that, uh, uh, that's really a, a good question, and uh, I think it's a, it's a fundamental one. And as we said, the smart module is not here to, um, to replace the traditional modules in all the application areas, uh, but to, um, more to complement the current offering uh, and uh, enable new applications either in the, in the existing verticals as uh, an evolutionary step of the current applications or to address areas uh, that have not been addressable so far or to enable brand new solutions, segment, brand new solutions and uh, brand new segments for, uh, for IoT. Um, I think that the process uh, uh, to select uh, um, the right module technology is pretty much the same that uh, developers need to go through in, uh, in every project. Although in this case, um, uh, we need to consider um, we need to consider more aspects and KPIs that are um, that are relevant to the decision. So you cannot be uh, you cannot be naive and simply think about the smart module as a mere evolution of an embedded module with uh, just a higher horsepower and more connectivity options. And there's a cost and complexity involved in that. And, uh, and that makes sense if you can utilize it. So once the use cases and the requirements are clearly defined, it is important uh, to understand whether the increased integration of functions would be uh, beneficial to creating, um, um, to creating a solution that really takes advantage of most of the capabilities that are available in the, in the platform. Um, this means that we have to find uh, a, a good match with at least some uh, some of the key aspects uh, of uh, of the of the smart module. Uh, so, for example, um, the hardware configuration and the peripherals. So, if you need to manage, for example, displays or touch screens, or, or cameras, uh, or you need uh, multiple connectivity technologies into the same device, um, well, the decision is pretty. It's pretty obvious. And another aspect is the processing power that is needed by your application. Uh, it makes sense to develop uh, an application on a smart module is, uh, if the solution is compute intensive, for example. Or uh, because you, on the software and services uh, ecosystem uh, that you need, uh, uh, that you need to leverage in your uh, in uh, in your solution. Also, I I will not forget the user experience, especially if you if your device is going to be not uh, uh, an headless solutions, but you have to make sure uh, at the same time that uh, you will be able uh, to to correctly design the overall user experience. Uh, they involve the UI aspects, uh, considering that um, uh, the user expectations are set, but what is available to them in the consumer space. So I think this is, um, I think I have touched only on some aspects, but I, I hope uh, uh, at least that those that are uh, the key aspects uh, are clear. Thanks, Martino. Um, next question we've gotten here. Do you have plans for integration with cloud services such as Azure for your smart modules? Okay, I think 
that's another question for me. So, uh, uh, thanks for the question because this is actually an aspect that we haven't touched uh, uh, during the, the, the presentation, but um, I, it's a strategic one for Telit uh, in the evolution of the of the smart module portfolio and our portfolio in general and our value proposition. And so the initial release of the product uh, uh, will provide some uh, sample apps that shows how to connect to generic cloud services, uh, either through MQTT or REST APIs. But that those are just uh, initial examples and not the not the end goal. Uh, so if you look at the other products in our portfolio, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, the strategy on software and the, and the value add services. So the plan is to go down the same path, also for smart module, and um, and we will increase our offer both in terms uh, of uh, pre-integrated software components that uh, will allow to, for example, to connect to third-party platforms uh, like Azure uh, or AWS, for example, uh, but. We are also looking at uh, our one edge offering. Uh, we will provide uh, solutions to connect uh, to, to Telit services, uh, to do, for example, device management or connectivity management, and more in general, to provide uh, an integrated offering across uh, the, the, the whole Telit portfolio, like we are already doing for, uh, for other modules and uh, other technologies. Thanks, Martino. Um, next question we have, um, why is Telet starting now with Smart Module? Hey, Amanda, let me, let me take this one because uh, this is a very interesting uh, um, is one of the uh, oldest uh, um, serving employees at Telet. I can tell you that uh, um, one of the things about Telet that uh, I think uh, Martino's presentation has made clear today is that we do not get into um, uh, into uh, business areas, new product lines without really making sure that we, you know, we're adding, you know, every bit of value uh, and uh, have a good solution for, you know, the, the major pain points of our <clears throat> of our customers and. Uh, you know, we we never have taken the uh, the, the path of uh, putting a, a reference design on a board and turning, you know, flipping it over the wall and calling it a product. Um, if you look at Telet's uh, history, we <laughs> you heard Martino mention that the uh, story of the smart module starts in 2017. Um, and that's as 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 tracked by the uh, industry analysts, but. Uh, um, you can look back at 2007 and tell it introduced uh, the GE86863 um, um, uh, Pro Cube, which was a you know the precursor of the smart module, if you will. It was a it was a dual processor uh, uh, module, a GSM GPRS module with uh, you know with uh, 200 MIPS. Uh, um, uh, ARM9 processor dedicated to uh, uh, a, a, a com you know computing environment. For the time, it was very powerful, and you know it wasn't obviously an Android product at that point. It was uh, Python and C++, but uh, uh, you know it was the uh, it was we were starting to to map this uh, this space out and uh, and start to um, to understand. You know what it would take to, to you know, to be a, 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 you know, to make this into something that we uh, uh, we would, you know, bring to market eventually. So, and then in, in that was followed in twenty in two thousand sixteen, actually one year before the the analysts started tracking the space with it, yet another uh, uh, product, uh, um, effort call, you know, uh, the. Um, our uh, XC922 um, series of uh, products, uh, and uh, you know that already included a little bit more of the uh, of the flavor of the smart module with uh, you know some of the uh, touch screen and uh, and and high uh, advanced interfaces and in, in, in uh, um, consumer modeled um, 
uh, features. So the bottom line is we needed, we understood, as I mentioned earlier today, this is about a, uh, a coming together of an ecosystem uh, uh, where things need to work across a, uh, a vast array of, uh, of uh, problem solving and challenges overcome. And that's what essentially has taken, why it has taken us, uh, um, you know, essentially what you look, what you see here over 15 years of studying the space to, to, to launch this product line. So it's, um, I guess it just really makes it uh, really uh, uh, powerful for uh, for our customers to uh, to just uh, um, dive into uh, into adopting it without uh, um, without issues. Great, thank you, Joe. Um, next question I have here is: a smart module a good fit um, if someone needs to design a low power solution? Yeah, I can take this. So I think uh, I think this goes back to the considerations we we have made in the previous uh, uh, in the previous questions of traditional embedded uh, versus smart, and that's actually a good example of why the decision to go with one module uh, or the other is not an obvious one. Uh, so the architecture of the smart module is derived uh, from uh, mobile handset and the power consumption is uh, an important KPI also in uh, in that space it's for sure an optimized platform in terms of uh, power consumption but i think it's pretty clear that this concept is uh, is a rel relative concept so what can be considered uh, low power in some areas uh, uh, might result uh, not even close to the minimum uh, requirements uh, uh, of another solution segment. So it might be acceptable for a use case uh, to have um, a device that needs to be recharged uh, after a few days. But if we look at some verticals uh, like uh, metering, uh, where the target is to have a device running on the same battery pack for many years, uh, yeah, that uh, there is really a huge difference. So I know this is a, an extreme example, but just to give you a sense of the reasoning that must be behind the decision of adopting a, a smart module and how the KPI of, uh, of your application can have an impact uh, on your decision and uh, pose some important uh, challenges and constraints uh, on the on the on the decision that you're going to make for your uh, for your product and your design. Thanks, Martino. Um, let me see here. Next question I have: um, What are the benefits of going with Talit for smart modules, since they are already fairly commoditized in the broad market? Yeah, this is an interesting question, and uh, uh, let me take it because uh, I just want to complete on what uh, Joe already said. I think it's important to, uh, to 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 restate the fact that we don't see and we don't approach the, 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 this uh, this product, the smart module, as as a commodity component. It is a core component uh, of the system uh, of the architecture, so it's something. It is uh, that, uh, that is very important, uh, and uh, so it must be uh, carefully sourced. And uh, so we see this type of modules more as um, as an enabler uh, to new use cases, uh, to new solutions, and also to innovate. Uh, I think we have talked uh, at length about uh, the need to, to navigate the complexity of um, such a highly integrated platform and the, the diverse set of uh, functional blocks uh, for lots uh, of developers. Um, for many of these developers, actually, it will, um, this will re represent uh, a first step into this, um, this kind of solutions. Um, and more in general, there is a blend of skills uh, and experience between uh, embedded IoT applications uh, and uh, Android uh, that uh, that is required. So we believe that Talit can be the, the, the partner, the partner that can provide um, 
uh, a good pre-integration of the key functionalities uh, under the, philosoph the philosophy of excellence in, the, in engineering and development, uh, which is um, even more um, a differentiator in the case of a complex platform like a, a, a smart module. So being a, a trusted advisor for our customers has always been key in our business. And, uh, and we've always played an essential role in many uh, critical uh, device, uh, device supply chains. Uh, uh, we have always guided our customers through the design, the implementation, the certification process, uh, and the deployment uh, uh, of, uh, of IoT solutions. So I don't see that changing going forward, but uh, becoming even more important uh, in uh, our strategy. Great. Thanks, Martino. Um, and I think that's a, a great place to sort of wrap up here. Um, audience, please be sure to check your inboxes in the coming days. We will send out this replay link um, so you can go back and, and re-listen to any pieces that you might have missed. Um, thank you, Joe and Martino, for your time today. Um, thank you to all who joined us, and I hope you have a wonderful day.